Mrs. Rose, we have our uh, city manager comments and update on city operations. Yes, Mayor and Council, there's only one item that we have. It's in reference to the customer service presence that was mentioned at the last council meeting. We indicated that starting today, the customer service opportunity will be at the back of the cha uh, chambers. We're going to pilot this for a month and it will be from 11 a.m. to after the public comment period uh, after each meeting. So it should begin today. Um, and that's all we have at this point. Does anyone have an update on the boil water advisory? I will get with the appropriate staff member and see if we can provide a quick update. Now would be the appropriate time to have that update. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Van Vliet. Okay. I think I have a, a, a brief um, to go here. Uh, Mark Van Vleck, Assistant City Manager. Uh, good morning. Uh, today I'm here to discuss the recent boil water notice. Uh, first thing I wanted to start out by is the city's water uh, flows from the Cal Allen area to the island across 35 miles with more than 1,300 miles of piping that are in various uh, sizes, materials, and age. Okay. It's also separated into two pressure zones, uh, which is the, the main part, and then the island is actually a separate zone. To monitor the quality of the water in our distribution system, we have 98 locations that we collect data from twice each month. Uh, and all are reported on our city website. Okay. That anyone, as soon as we finish each day, we actually post the information on this location so that anyone can look at this data any day, just like we have it. You can go there and take a look for yourself to see. Uh, chlorine is a component that we test to make sure levels are high enough to avoid uh, harmful bacteria. The minimum acceptable level of total chlorine residual is 0.5 milligrams per liter at any location in the water distribution system. Last Friday, of those 98 sites, here is what it looked like. 23 of were above 3.0. 24 were between 2.5 and 3. 19 were between 2 and 2.5. 18 were between 1.5 and 2.0. 11 were between 1.0 and 1.5. Two were between 0.5 and 1.0, and we had one site that was ranging between 2.3 and 0.2. And we're going to be talking about each of these specifically. And no samples pest tested positive for E. coli. Uh, let me go back to the previous map. Uh, the, the three sites that were at issue that were ranging between the one, below one, were Glenmore, Harbor Lights, and Quetzal. Could you point those out on the map, please? I can. Right Thank here you. is Glenmore, here is Harbor Lights, and here is Quetzal. And I have a, we're going to, I'm going to show you a map of those specific sites here in a second, but I wanted you to get a context of where they are in relation to our system. You'll notice that they're very far away from Owen Stevens, and that ranging on the chlorine residuals, the higher ones are really closest to the Cal Allen area, going to the lower as you go out further and further away from the treatment plant. First of all, uh, let's cover Quetzal, which um, actually is the site that prompted the boil water notice. Okay. Uh, this site, since mid-April, this site has ranged between 2.3 and 0.6. On Thursday, we tested this site early in the day and had a reading above 1.5. Later in the day, TCQ tested the site and obtained a reading of less than 0.5. On Friday, we tested that site at 0800 in the morning and had a reading above approximately 2. TCQ took a sample at around 10 the same morning and obtained a result less than 0.5. And because we are in You've noticed that a majority of the city is one, in one pressure zone. They directed us to issue a water notice for the entire city. 
At about 10.30 Friday night, we determined that one line that crosses under the OSO, this one right here, okay, appeared to be causing the problem. How we isolated it is if you go back and Quetzal is right in this area right here. What, if you'll notice, there's a fire hydrant here and there's a fire hydrant here. And on the one to the east, we had a 2.3. And directly across the street, we had a 0.4. Our first thought was we have a closed valve. So we looked at the valve, we dug it up, and the valve was open. At that point, we were still stumped as to what is causing this problem. Okay? But we went back and we closed the valve here and pulled water through. And since that time, that area starting at about 11 o'clock on Friday night has been at 2.3 and remained there. Okay. Um, there's been some discussion that we noticed the information and we didn't act on it. And as I go through each of these sites, I want to discuss them in detail to show that we did see the information and we did take actions right, on each of these sites. Uh, one of them that I did not highlight to you, okay, because it's, it's kind of a, a, a good news story, uh, is North Beach, which I'm showing here. Uh, let's see. On March 7th, we noticed that the total chlorine residual had dropped below 1.0. Over the next two days, we conducted valve sweeps in the area and found some valves that were closed. On March 10th, we performed a unidirectional flushing, and in this technique, you increase the volume of water through the water line such that it scours away any biofilm buildup which can actually cause the nitrification, which can cause the chlorine residuals to drop. Okay. On March 15th, we installed auto flushers to try to create an artificial demand and since that time, we have been above 1, and in general, right now, it's 1.4. So it, it, we took action as soon as we saw something. Okay. The Glenmore area, and this is actually the one that concerns me the most. Um, and if, if, uh, if you can have... Yeah, if you can um, okay. uh, show on, the Glenmore area again, please. It's up. Oh, I thank Can you. Can you see it? Yeah, I apologize. That's the holistic okay. area. Thank you. Uh, on March 24th, this site dropped below 1.0. On March 29th, we initiated additional flushing and have continued additional flushing. This site has continued to range between 0.5 and 1.0. Uh, for this area, we plan to continue utilizing unidirectional flushing, but for a long-term fix, we are replacing the 1950s cast iron pipe because there's so much of it, um, this project is going to take several months. And during that time, we're, we are going to be struggling. Okay. And we'll, we'll bring it out here in a second. But the, what is causing this is it, it's called tuberculation. Uh, cast iron pipe, over time, actually uh, starts to almost appear as if it's plugged. And when that occurs, the unidirectional flushing does not help. Okay. It, it, the really, the only solution is to isolate it, cut it out, and replace it. Okay. Another site that we've had issues with, on March 16th, this site dropped below 1.0. Uh, we installed auto flushers, and the area has stayed above between 0.5 and 1.0. Uh, over the weekend, and the key is, is over the weekend, what we've been doing since Friday night is going to these areas that were close to point, between 0.5 and 1 and trying to get them well above 1 and as close to 1.5 or 2 as we can. And in this particular case, by opening and closing different valves, uh, we've been able to keep harbor lights now above 2. Um, hopefully, you can see that we are monitoring and we are taking action. Okay? Uh, but with the age of the system, and with the amount of construction we're doing, on any particular day, we can encounter a brief sample that is below 0.5. And what TCEQ has told me is this time they gave us two days to fix it. From now on, if it's 0.5, they will want us to issue a boil water notice for the entire city. Given that, I don't know how we can guarantee that we will never collect a sample on the first shot that doesn't have a 0.5 
All it takes is a valve closed, and we don't know it, and we will be there. And I didn't bring up another site that we actually have had a lot of construction in the Kronkawa and that area around the hospital. Uh, we found three blocks over from where we were encountering the problem, there was a valve closed that was causing the problem. It's now well above 1.0. And I stand by for any questions.